Hello. Uh, today, what we're going to do is take a look at VCAs and envelope generators in Max. And although we have some uh, additional options for what type of envelope generators we might want to be looking at, today we're going to focus our discussion on line tilde and curve tilde and its associated function user interface object. So to get started, uh, what I'm going to do is make a sine wave with the cycle object. 200 hertz is probably reasonable thing that won't <laughs> reasonable frequency that won't hurt our ears. And I'm going to make a VCA. And a VCA in Max is just a multiply. And because we're multiplying audio signals, we want to multiply with a tilde on it. Oops, that's an exclamation point. Uh, multiply with a tilde. And this functions like a regular VCA. This would be our signal input, this would be our control input, and this is the output of the VCA. So I'll plug my sine wave generator into my VCA, and then I'll plug this into a DAC. All right, so let's plug this in. I shouldn't hear anything because this VCA is, without any arguments, is biased to zero. So um, if I turn this up, we're not going to hear anything. Now let's add a volume control to our VCA by producing a constant with a float object. And because this is going to scale the output of my cycle tilde object, I'm going to go ahead and set the bounds of this object so it doesn't you know, inadvertently clip for me. So we're going to start at 0. That'll be our lowest value. And our maximum value will be 1. And so I can change this from anywhere from 0 to 1. Let's put this away so we have a little bit more space. All right, so now if I plug this in, I'm not actually listening to this, so I'm just going to assume that you can hear there's a um, there's a 200 hertz cycle there. Now, one of the things that is kind of interesting about this setup is this user interface object can produce instantaneous discontinuities in the sound, which results in what we know as zipper noise. I'm going to turn this up again and move this user interface element just so you can appreciate the noise that happens when the value skips around. OK, so you should hear little little clicks and pops in the, in the audio as that's happening. And now, typically, we don't really uh, produce this structure from scratch. I mean, if all we wanted to do was have a, a cycle tilde object that was go that was scaled in amplitude, you might use something like a, a gain tilde object, which um, wouldn't have this type of uh, clicking and popping built into it. So this is just a volume slider. And you could probably tell that there's, no, there's none of that zipper noise that we had before. Um, so any sort of user interface object that's designed for amplitude scaling is going to smooth that out for you. But there are situations where your amplitude is going to be scaled programmatically, or you just need to get rid of it by hand. So this is the first use case for the line tilde object. So instead of this object going directly into this VCA and manipulating it, what we want to do is we want to smooth out these uh, discontinuities uh, by um, just interpolating between them, or like you're just having a ramp between the old value and the new value. So we're going to do that with this line tilde object. Now if I just plug this user interface object, this float, into this line tilde object, we're not going to gain any advantage. All it's going to it's going to behave exactly as it did before. So we still have zipper zipper noise. But the thing that we're illustrating here is that the line tilde object does something different depending on the messages it receives. Now, all max objects behave like this. This is not news, but the the detail here is if line tilde receives a float that is by itself, meaning it's just a number that's produced by this, it instructs line tilde to behave in a certain way. And that is, I want you to go to that value immediately, which is no different than if the line tilde uh, object weren't here. If I want to produce a ramp, then I need to give it a, another instruction, which is how long I want it to take to go from the current value to the new value that I'm instructing it to go to. And this is accomplished through the use of a list. So let's put this number box you know, aside for a moment and just produce a list where we can specify how long it's going to ramp to go from this old value to the new value that we're telling it to. So the list can just be 
anything more than one number. So a pair of two numbers or a, you know successive pairs of numbers after that. So if I wanted to go to the value of one in one second, I would say one followed by 1000 milliseconds as we're specifying these durations and because we're specifying these durations in milliseconds. And if I wanna go off, I could say I wanna to go to zero in 1000 milliseconds. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, we don't need to know what value we're at currently. We just are saying that it's going to take 1,000 milliseconds to get to zero. So currently, line tilde, if I hover over this, you can see it's currently at 0.9, but we can't hear it because the volume's down. I'm going to turn the volume up, and then I'm going to click this message box, and it should take uh, you know, 1,000 milliseconds to get down to its um, uh, zero value. And also, uh, while we're here, let's, let's add a live.scope to, to see the output. So plug this in, and now we can see a nice uh, waveform there. I'll turn this up. And now it goes, fades down to zero. I can do the reverse, I can fade back to one. Okay, so if we want to simply get rid of zipper noise, then we can have a fixed amount of time, and the worst case scenario uh, is a sine wave. Like any, any type of waveform that is more complex or has more, more harmonics than a sine wave um, is going to be progressively less difficult to hear instantaneous discontinuities in the sound. So a sine wave is the worst case scenario, and the base, best case scenario is a very complex waveform or noise, and you wouldn't really be able to hear zipper noise with, a, with something like that. So if you can solve for a sine wave, then it will work on everything. Uh, the way that we would uh, get rid of zipper noise is we would have our user interface element and we would produce, produce this list. So this is the value that we want to go to, which would be represented by the first element of the list, and then the, how long it's going to take would be the second element of the list. So I could do something like this where uh, I just need to produce a list that has that second value by a certain amount of time that I want the ramp to be. And 10 milliseconds is usually uh, appropriate for this. So if I say uh, dollar sign one, which is going to be, which is replacing whatever this value is coming into it, and then add 10 milliseconds to it, the resulting message is going to be the input, you know, and followed by 10 milliseconds. Now this syntax of having two elements in a message box is going to tell line tilde the same, exactly the same thing that we did with these message boxes, except that this is dynamic and can be manipulated on the fly. So let's get rid of these. I'll plug this in. And this is my structure for getting rid of zipper noise. Doesn't matter how fast or slow I, I move this, we've, we've completely gotten rid of the zipper noise. So if you want to create more complex envelope shapes, then it's really just a matter of having these successive pairs of two numbers. So I could design uh, an arbitrarily complex envelope just simply by combining these together. So I could say I wanna uh, go to one in uh, 500 milliseconds, and then I wanna go to zero in 500 milliseconds, and I wanna go to one in 10 milliseconds, and I wanna go to zero in 10 milliseconds, and then I would like to go to uh, one in 1,000 milliseconds, and then back down to zero in 30 milliseconds. Let's see if that works. All right, terrific. So you can compl you can create these envelope shapes just by using uh, a list of numbers here. Now. You can see that this isn't very human readable and uh, it's easy to get lost in here. Um, sometimes in documentation, you may encounter some instructions to line tilde that look something like this. Like you'll see like zero comma, and then we're gonna go to one in 40 milliseconds and then zero in 2000 milliseconds. So the question is, what is this comma and what is this zero? Well, uh, we can answer the first question because we know that if you just send a single integer to line tilde, then it's gonna to go to that value immediately. So the comma here is separating this message from these other messages. These are two separate messages in one message box. And we know that if we uh, send various messages to uh, the max console, 
So if I say send this message cowmu, then it's one message on one line. If I send it the message cow kamamu, these are two separate messages in the same message box. So understanding this aspect is a max issue, not a line tilde issue. And it means that we have two separate messages here. But now that we know that a single integer means go to that value immediately, and then uh, messages that are more complex than that, that have like pairs of elements, then that's the rest of the envelope generator. So sometimes you'll encounter this where you want to go to zero and then uh, go to start at zero immediately and then progress to the rest of the envelope. Now this message has exactly the same result if we just did this. Like sometimes um, it's a little awkward to have a comma in a message box if this message box is being updated programmatically. And if that's the case, if the comma is giving you some problems, you, this message is exactly the same as if I just said, oh, I want to go to zero in zero milliseconds, and then I want to go to one. These two, these two messages are entirely equivalent. So uh, if you want to use this, in, if you want to use this type of structure instead of this, that's perfectly okay. This will do exactly the same thing. Okay, now, the, this sets the stage for uh, having a user interface object that can produce these lists of numbers for us. And this is where the, the function object comes in handy. All right, so the function object allows you to produce these lists of numbers. And it's better to think about the function object in this way rather than thinking about the function object as an envelope generator. Now, usually when I'm using the function object, I'm, I'm working in a locked patcher. So I'm gonna lock this patcher so I don't inadvertently create uh, control points that um, are not what I'm expecting. More on that in just a little bit, but I just wanna create this kind of envelope shape here. If I click anywhere in this uh, user interface, I'm gonna create new uh, breakpoints and you can use the shift key to shift click away any breakpoints you in inadvertently create. Now, you will notice that um, by default, it's telling me the X and Y values and the X value goes from zero to one and the, X and the Y, I'm sorry, the X value goes from uh, one, zero to 1000 and the Y value goes to zero to one. Now, thankfully uh, you can change all that what this means is the default domain of a function object, if you haven't modified anything, is 1,000 milliseconds. And the default y value goes from 0 to 1, which uh, matches up pretty precisely with what you would want to control a VCA. You have a value between 0, which would be no output, and 1, which would be 100% output. Now, uh, first of all, with a function object, this first outlet will give you the interpolated x or interpolated y for the input x. So if I plugged in a number box or a float to this, um, I can use this as like a as a you know a table lookup. Um, but that's not typically how people use the function object. We use the function object as an envelope generator to produce lists that look like this, and that comes out of the second outlet here. So if I um, plugged in something to the second outlet. I can get the function object to produce this list of numbers by sending it a bang. And so here's a list of numbers that look kind of scary, but what we see here is we want to go to 1 in 138 milliseconds, that describes this segment here, and then we want to go to 0 in 861 milliseconds, that describes that segment there. And I can take this resulting uh, envelope, you know, uh, this, this message, and send this to the line tilde object. All right, there it goes. Okay, so now a few more details about this. Now, um, sometimes you're gonna want an envelope generator that is more than a thousand milliseconds, and thankfully that's something that we can change. So if I go to the inspector of this function object, what we're looking for is the do high domain value. So if I'm gonna search for domain, and you see high domain display value is currently a thousand milliseconds. So uh, I'm gonna take this uh, adder UI or I'm gonna take this attribute and turn it into an adder UI just by dragging it off into my um, max patcher here. And I can change this domain to be longer or shorter. And the thing that you notice that the, the contents stay stuck to their absolute positions as I'm making the domain larger and smaller. 
And for simple envelopes like this, you may be thinking, well, hey, I want to create my envelope shape and I just want to change the entire domain. Um, that is possible, and you can do that with the message set domain. Set domain, and I will set this to replace whatever's coming on the input. Now watch what happens. I'm going to set my domain back to 1,000 milliseconds. Oops, 1,000 milliseconds. And now if I use set domain, I'm changing the domain, but the shape is not going to change uh, size in, inside of it. So watch. See, I can make this domain whatever I want, and I'm not scaling the content. So that's a, that's a nice tip if you've ever wanted to do that. It took me a while to figure that out. Um, all right, so we have, our, we have our list of numbers, and you can see that as I'm scaling the domain, uh, the, the ranges of these segments is also changing depending on what that value is. I can take this list of numbers and just send it right into this line tilde. And I can fire it with this bang. Oops, let's, let's hear that. All right, there it is. Uh, you can also take the output of this, uh, this envelope generator. So I will create the bang, send that out. And you can buffer this in a ZL reg. So ZL reg, and I'm going to use this bang to stuff that into the ZL reg. And now I can take the output of the ZL reg and bang this, and it will output. So I just like took this you know, list of numbers and stored it temporarily inside, inside of here. Now, the next thing that we can do is you, one of the first questions I usually get from my students is, well, what if I don't want to have linear segments? And the answer to that question is you, you actually have the ability to, have, uh, to edit the curvature of these segments. Before I get into this, I just want to mention really quickly, let me pop open the, the help file. Um, you can have extremely complicated envelope shapes here and uh, use zooming, you know, zoom vertically and horizontally to uh, see, you know, something that's extremely complex. So I'm not going to demonstrate that, but just check out the help file so that you know what's going on there. Now, about curved segments. This is a little, little bit, you know, different. And what we need to do is select the function object, and we're going to find um, an attribute. I think it's called mode. And this mode is under appearance, and right now it's set to linear. We're going to change this mode and set it to curve. Now, here's the problem. Um, if Even with a very, very simple envelope shape like this, if I were to output this, let's count how many numbers come out of this user interface object. So we're, we're, start, we're going to 0.9 in 81 milliseconds, and then there's his additional zero here. And then we're going to 0 and 662 milliseconds, and then there's another, another 0. These additional two uh, numbers here um, are indicating the curvature of the segments. And 0 indicates a curvature of, of linear segment, meaning no curvature at all. That means that the output here is not formatted in the syntax that line tilde understands. So if you're using this as an envelope generator to a VCA, that means that you can't use line tilde anymore, and you now have to use an object called curve tilde. Curve tilde is just like line tilde, except it takes a list in the format of three elements instead of two elements. So now that I have that, I can plug this in. And even if the segments have no curvature, they still have an additional number in there. You will not be able to use line tilde even if you have linear segments. <laughs> All right, now let's adjust the curvature. Again, I'm going to go into a locked patcher here, and we're going to use the option key. And you can see that your cursor turns into a little, you know, kind of arrow, up and down arrow. And now you can adjust the curvature, and you can see the positive and negative curvature here. You can go from, you know, uh, 1 to negative 1 about to change the curvature of any of these segments. <laughs> Now, one question that you should be asking yourself right now is, well, what if I, what if I have a sustain, uh, what if I want sustain, like I'm holding down a note on my keyboard? And the good news is that the function object can handle sustain, and this is one of the reasons why I'm working with an unlocked patcher, or in a locked patcher, because there's a subtlety to 
the user interface here that may not be quite obvious if, you, if you're new to function. In previous versions of Max, to create a sustain point, what you would have to do is command click on it. And that's been changed in uh, 817 or 816, where now to create a sustain point, you have to command double click, and that will create a very different looking point. Now it's kind of like hollow. And if you inadvertently create a sustain point and you don't know what's going on, uh, this is what's going to happen. Like I'm going to send a bang to send this entire uh, envelope generator to curve tilde, and then it's going to seem to get stuck because it's going to stay on the sustain point. And you're like, hey, my envelope generator is broken. Um, but this is how the sustain points work. You can actually have multiple sustain points in your, in your patch. So here's, I'm going to make another one. Command double click. And, or, I'm sorry. There we go. And so now you can have a new message sent to this envelope generator that will move on to the next sustain point. And that message is indeed next. So I say uh, message and next, and I can move between these sustain points. And there you go. OK, so um, this video turned out to be a little bit longer than I was expecting, but I wanted to cover things like DCAs, curve segments, the difference between line tilde and curve tilde, and then also using line tilde to produce smoothing. So there's a whole bunch of techniques here that you should be able to find useful in your own work, especially if you're coming from the world of modular synthesizers and you're wondering how to do these same sort of things in Max.